It's time to really look into your retirement. Your retirement. How sound are your finances or your business finances? Business finances. How do you start with wealth building? Wealth building. If these are questions you have unanswered, then welcome to Business Builders with Robert Tanner Jr. Well, good good morning, and this is Pastor Robert Tanner, and we're coming to you with Business Builders, and today we're going to be talking about retirement. We're going to be talking about um, what you need to understand before you get into retirement, what you need to be doing right now concerning your retirement, and also some options as it relates to retirement. So um, you want to get involved in conversation, we want you to do so by calling us at 504-341-8255. That's 504-341-8255. 8255. So let's just talk about it and let's just talk about how our retirement planning gets off and what it's really all about in the first place and some things, very important things that you need to be thinking about leading up to this moment of retirement. Now, the first thing is the obvious thing. You see it all over television. It's the thing you have to be thinking about. And here's what it is. We are just simply living longer. So again, if your traditional retirement planning plan for 10 years or 20 years beyond your retirement, all the experts now are saying that you need to plan for a retirement period, a time in your life where you are not working that may last as long as 30 to 40 years. So I want you to think about that. That would mean then what a lot of people are saying is that if you left your job at 65, In today's technology, today's medical advances and so forth, you could expect to live into your 90s. And so if that is true, then that means that your retirement monies need to be able to last you for that period of time, which is about 30 years of retirement time. So you need to think about that because what kind of a nest egg do you need in place and what kind of income projections do you need in place? Because I just need to be honest with you and you understand this. You've heard all the stories about people retired and now they're, they're dealing with the shopping carts over at Walmart or they're doing various things of this nature because they found out that their retirement check was was not going to be enough to support them in retirement, so they could have, they're supplementing their income. Some of you all are taking advantage of some drop programs where you're doing your three-year, five-year drop because you're realizing that there's not enough if you start now to handle your retirement situation. And so we need to start talking about what can we do then to make it last a longer period of time, and what are some of the smarter moves to be doing now. Now, you heard me on an earlier show telling you that if you had the benefit of being on a job and you had to be benefit of a job that pays a 401k and a pension and so forth, we told you that if you are able to do so, that you should take a little bit less home and maximize. Now, let me be clear what I'm saying to you. I'm not saying to you do maximum to the amount that they're matching, like some of your people may match the first 3%. I'm saying if they'll allow you to put 15% away and they only match the first 3%, then put the entire 15% away. Go up to the max that they will let you do. If you've got the pension the same way, you want them to enhance your pension as best they can, as much as they can. So all of you listening to me and you're in your mid-40s or you're in your early 40s and you have about another 20 years to do this, you want to begin to max out that plan right now. Now, for many of you all, when they give you a time to select, and sometimes you have funds that let you select retirement, plans that you select you most of you all if you're in your 40s let me give you just some guidelines if you're in your 20s or 30s and you're with that company you want to be in an aggressive mix or, or pretty close to a moderate aggressive mix if you're in your mid 40s to 50s you want to be in more of a moderate mix but you want to be in a growth you want to have most of the money 60 percent of the money so far in a moderate growth scenario Okay, and as you get toward the end, you're getting now to where you're you've hit the mid 50s and 65. You got to get out of there. You need to be moving in like what I call the blue chips. You want to be dealing with companies that grow. You should get about a 12 percent return if you're doing that kind of thing between now and the time you get out of there. And that's what you want to try to do. So you need to go and visit with your HR person. If you're sitting around here in bonds or sitting around in things that don't grow and you're in your uh, 30s and 40s, you've got to you got to begin to think and about getting in an aggressive posture so you can get that money really growing. And, and since the money is being used, most of those things are being funded by mutual funds. You need to make sure you get a good selection of those. And if you don't have anyone that come and talk to you on a regular basis, I'm telling you now that if you're in these age ra- brackets, this is what you need to be doing if you have a retirement plan that works 
in your office and you're able to give to that particular retirement plan. So if you, need, you what you need to do is go see your HR person and find out when can I change what I'm contributing and when can I begin to do asset allocation within my retirement plan. And they will let you know that. Now, for some of some of the others of you um, who's in retirement plans you, and you're getting close to it, you may have some thoughts that I need to put in your mind right now um, that I want you to really think about. Now, the original intent of retirement and the original way that most qualified plans are set up, and when I say qualified plan, all I mean is a plan where they take out the taxes pre-tax. They take it out before you get your paycheck. Now, if you have one of those kind of plans, which is a 401k, 403b, those type of traditional plans where they're taking out the money and putting in a retirement plan before it goes on to your paycheck, that's a pre-tax qualified plan. Now, Understand this. this is very, very important. The idea behind that kind of planning is that we're going to go ahead and withhold this money pre-taxed now because later on down the line when it comes back out, you would be in a lower tax bracket and therefore you'd pay less taxes by doing it this way. And I'm going to say to you that during the time of Ronald Reagan and during the time of George Bush, both of them, that would be true. However, you're now here in the time of Barack Obama, and what that means is the taxes across the country are lower now than they've ever been. And so I want you to hear what I'm saying to you. The tax bracket under Ronald Reagan, the highest tax bracket in land was 75 percent. That means the high earners were paying 75 percent of what they did in taxes. Then when you came down, when he had the law change coming into the Bush era, the highest tax bracket in land was 55%. So now all the high earners had to pay a little more than half of their money off in taxes. Under Obama, the law for the highest tax bracket in the country is 39.6%. And it's not going much lower because now we have this deficit that is out of control and all of this. And it's, not, it's just not going to go any lower than what it is. So that being said... Here's the new strategy. Here's what's newly happening right now. What's going on now is that people are now seriously thinking about, wait a minute, it might make sense right now for me to go ahead and draw down all my retirement and take the hit now at 28.8%, for example, if that's your tax bracket, take the hit now and then take that money and put it now into a non-qualified plan. Now, why would you do that? You take it from the qualified place because your, your understanding is that if I let them take it now in the low tax bracket, when I get it back, I'm going to be in the high tax bracket, which basically means now when I'm getting the money back, even though I saved 28 percent on the front end, now I'm having to pay 50 percent on the money I'm getting back out at a time when I can least afford to replace money. And so people who are thinking about that, seriously thinking about it, are saying, you know what, I'm going to draw it down in this low tax environment and then I'm going to go ahead and take the hit and then I'm going to take that money and put it now into a non-qualified environment, have it grow tax deferred, and then the money's going to come out to me tax free. Now, why is that important? Because when the money's coming back out tax free, I don't care what the tax bracket is in the future. The tax bracket could be 50%, it could be 75%. It won't matter to me because because my money is coming back out tax free. And so people who, who are understanding what I'm saying and are thinking about it seriously are understanding that if I'm going to take a hit, do I want to take a hit at 28 percent or do I want to take a hit at what may be 50 percent? Now, if you're in retirement and currently if you retire today, then you may be getting it at your current tax bracket. But let me tell you what most people have found out, and, and it's, it's just the way it is. People have actually found out that they're actually not bringing in less income at their retirement. I'm, I'm sitting down with them every day. And because they have rental property, and because they've paid off the rental property, and because the income is still coming in, and they now have their retirement check coming in, and they have a Social Security check coming in, they're finding that they're having eighty and $90,000 coming into their house in retirement. And now now, the problem with that is when you're making that kind of money and you're now in retirement, you're now in a nice size tax bracket and you have no write offs anymore. You have nothing. To, the real estate's paid for. It's all pure income. And what's happening is even your Social Security checks, pure income. The pension is pure income. And so since you have income with no write off, you have to pay a lot of taxes.
And so people who are understanding this are understanding that it may be smart for me right now to go ahead and take that hit, get this money into a non-qualified environment so it can grow tax deferred, no 1099s going in, but now when it's time to get the money, I don't care about the tax brackets because the money is coming to me tax free. Now, this concept is, is, is totally going over your head. I invite you to go to our website. That's www.integrityfbc.com. Go to end of career planning and there's going to be a video of a CPA and one of the most famous CPAs in the country uh, Ed shot and I want you to go and and you press it turn it on it's 30 minutes but it will help you to understand the concept and we understand the concept it'll make sense to you and then you can make a, a real good decision on what you should do also you won't have a limit in future contributions which means you can now take rental income and other things like that and continue to load this plan up even above and beyond the limits that you have at your job so for example your job may have you at 50 years old with a limit of 15 percent of your income is the most you can put in in a non-qualified plan you know you need to catch up and a non-qualified plan don't have those kind of rules so if you need to put twenty thousand dollars in it this year then you put twenty thousand dollars in it this year well you may can't do that under a qualified plan. It gets to grow tax deferred. You get the money back out tax free. It's just smart for many, many people and people are rethinking this whole concept. I want to go back to the first idea. If in fact taxes are going to be higher in the future, and let me just give you some indicators, some things to think about. Right now, where we are today, interest rates are at an all time low. They, they are lower than they've been in, in forever. And the people complain about all the time, I can't get nothing at the bank. I, I'm making nothing, literally nothing at the bank. And, and, and yet they have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank, knowing they're making no money. Now, they also know that retirement's going to last them longer than they thought. And so if this money don't get to making money over here, then basically they have this idea in their mind that it could be that this money might run out. And since the money doesn't have any guaranteed lifetime flow, many of those people are thinking about it's time to get that money out of those low interest rate environments, get them into an annuity for two reasons. Reason number one, many of the annuities will give you a bonus of up to 10% just for putting the money in it. Then it will grow and never go below 2% as a floor. And many of them are saying if you do it in the, in, over the next five years, you'll be able to, every time you put money in, get the bonus. Some are saying we'll give you 10% bonus to come in and 20% bonus when you exit, if you should ever exit with a lump sum. But let's make it more important. The important thing about an annuity is that they will give you on paper a guaranteed lifetime income. And anytime you ask them for it while the money is growing, they'll tell you if we start today, your lifetime income starting next month will be this number. So now you're able and if it's in a non-qualified plan, meaning that the money came in from in a non-qualified way, then it would mean not only will you get this income, but this income will not be taxable. Now, if you did a rollover into an annuity from a qualified plan, then the money would be taxable coming back out. So you did uh, do a good rollover. You did get the money growing again. And you do have a lifetime guaranteed income, but the income is taxable. And now they can't control the tax rates. The annuity company can't do that. The tax rates are controlled by the government. And if the tax rates are going to be going up, I still say you are better served by having a non-qualified environment because none of us know what the tax is going to be. But one thing we do know is they're going to be higher than this artificial low they've been at for the longest. Somebody at some point is going to have to give America the hard news, the tough news. Some president going to sit there and say, I know that we've not raised taxes in forever. I know the promises of the last three presidents that we cannot, that we, we're not going to raise taxes. I get it. Everybody has kicked the can down the road. However, it's time now to deal with it. The deficit's out of control because we don't collect enough taxes. Every time we spend money on a military campaign, we spend money we don't have. We're at a point now to fix our fiscal house. We're going to have to, and it's not pretty for me to say it or nobody else to say it, but we're going to have to raise the taxes, period. We're going to have to raise the tax rate because not enough people pay taxes. So the ones that do pay, you've got to pay at a higher rate. Just got to be done. 
And we got to then use that to bring down our deficit because we just have to. There's no getting around it. And this is the day of strong medicine. And some politician is going to have to do that at some point. Now, when that happens, if you had the money taken out in this low environment and now you now know the money that's coming out is not going to be coming out at 28.8. The money that's going to be coming out is going to be coming out in the 30s and 40s and 50s, which basically means if your retirement check was going to be $1,000 after taxes is 500 if it was going to be a thousand dollars on a 40 percent then after taxes it's 600 and you have to think about that so for a lot of people they're saying you know what i'm going to do i'm going to get into a qualified a non-qualified environment so when i get the thousand dollars it's a thousand dollars and so once you be thinking like that because we don't control that future and you have to really think about is this smart for me or not based on where you are now some of you all who are currently working because your age being what it is, you don't have the ability right now to go ahead and do a rollover. You don't have the ability to, to draw down. Some of you do, some of you don't. You have to make it. It's a personal decision. You have to make it and you have to decide, does that make sense for you to do that or not? And so think about it so you can begin to say, OK, I think I'm going to at least at least look into this and see if this makes sense for me. And you, a lot of you will probably find out that it will. And you have to appreciate now that there's many, many things that we are not sure about. We're not sure about how Social Security is going to be looking, you know, 30 years from now. We're not sure how it's going to look, you know, in the next five years. But you have to be considerate of that. We have to also be considerate of the idea that you have to put some things in place for yourself, not controlled by employers, because there have been situations where employers have had to use pension funds to keep the business going on. They've had to use 401k funds to keep the business going on. And, you know, it is what it is. And so please make sure that you are aware of and understand why we're suggesting to do the things that you do. Um, there's Jamal on line one. Go ahead, Jamal. Yeah, talk to me about uh, retirement type uh, programs right quick that, you know, maybe, that maybe you can count for me on. Um, well, we can count you on uh, many types of retirement plans. Um, uh, are you asking me about qualified versus well, non-qualified? I, I, okay, I work for the state, right? right. And, um, and I know that they talk about pension, but I, I'm not really, you know, it seems like, the, the, seem like it's getting to the point where it's like you have to be old and old and older to retire. I'm trying to see if there's a way that we can get even in a, in a younger Away, like you, I know my dad was telling me back in the day you could retire at 69, becoming 65, and he said by the time you get there, you'll be 70. I was like, I'll be dead before I, before I get a chance to it. You know. Well, the way the actuaries are looking at it, they don't think you're going to be dead. What they're what they're looking at is this: everybody's trying to make the money last. So the idea being, if we can hold on to the money until you're 70, we can make a little bit more money on the money, and then your retirement time wouldn't be as long because if you're leaving at, if we start paying at 70, and let's just say you want to live to say 90, then we got to pay for 20 years. If we let you out at 65, we got to pay for 25 years. If you got out at 62, we got to pay for, you know, 28 years. And so what they're trying to figure out is how do we make the money last? And the best way to do it is to hold on to it, let it grow as best we can until you get to a different age. Now, a lot of state retirements, for y'all listen to me with state retirements, but a lot of people with state retirement, it works this way. In some state retirement plans, like a teacher's state retirement, the teachers have no option. They're already, it's going to be annuitized. In a 403B, they're going to be annuitized, which basically means they have no option but to receive a check. They're going to get a monthly check, period. They have no ability to roll anything over, to draw anything down, uh, nothing like that. They will get a check. And they will then use that check. Someone will get dropped for a couple years and go ahead and make some money on top of that money. But at the end of the day, they get a check. You know, and they get the check for the rest of their life. And that's pretty much how it works, based on number of years and so forth. They calculate that. And many of the state programs kind of work that way. Well, now, if you have a program that you can know. roll over, like if you are uh, the fire department or the police department, where you actually have a re one you can roll over, then, mm -hmm. yes, you can draw it down, I think, at 60, some of y'all at 62, some of y'all at 61 and a half. It just depends. But okay. many of you can do that, just based on the situation. The, the teachers, are they in lasers as well? You, you ever heard of that program? Well, the teachers are under that state retirement program that's a, that's a full annuity. And so they have no option. They can either choose for the, an income for the rest of their life or, the, or their life and their spouse. That's the only okay. option they have. Okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, I hope that helps out, okay, Jamal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks okay. so much. Okay, Thanks. we have Miss Lady on line three. Hey, good ask. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm wonderful. How about you? I'm doing well. I love listening to your show. Thank you. Because every time I listen to the show, I learn a few more little pointers. But even though I hear them, it's always about implementing what you're saying so that you can set yourself up. Yes. You mentioned something about the teachers just now. Um, my mom set me up and as a beneficiary mm-hmm. so that when she passed away um, in 2005, I then get her retirement benefic- um, benefits mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. Right. So that's a blessing for me. But I still need to set up something for myself. Um, I've been working practically all my life. But I have very little savings. So how do I go about starting something from scratch? Well, if you're going to do something in an annuity, a non-qualified uh, annuity, you can start with as little as $1,000. That's the, the bare limit minimum um, that you're going to do an annuity with, and, and some are 5000 But one of the good things about it, if you do a flexible premium annuity, deferred annuity, it allows you to be able to keep contributing to it. And here's the wonderful thing. You get to contribute beyond the limits of a Roth IRA or beyond the limits of a, of a SEP IRA. You get, to, you get to contribute to catch up for what you, wherever you are if you're trying to secure a good income. And along the way, and the reason I, I, I'm pushing annuities as much as I am, because along the way you can check in at any time and they will tell you, here, if we started paying you a lifetime income, here's what it is. That gives you the ability to realize how much more or less you want to put in there because you you come up with a number that you want to be the number. Now, if you with an annuity that pays interest a full time, all you got to do now, int- the inflation rate is 2%. If it's paying 2% flat guaranteed at all times, that means that the, even the income they're paying you will automatically increase with inflation, which keeps your buying power the same once you begin to get the thing going. And that's why it's an important instrument in this kind of planning. So that's how you would implement it. You can take income you're having now and then decide, here's what I need to live off of and all the rest of this. And you have to have great discipline here. All the rest is going to build my future income. And and you sound like a person that you're smart enough not to spend every dime you get. Um, but if you can be smart enough to say, I, if I can live off 50% of this, then that means 50% of this can be growing for me. And if you can pull that off, long enough, then you'll guarantee yourself a good lifetime income and that you'll find that to be more important. If all senior people just understand this, when you get into retirement, having a lump sum of money is not near as important as having a lifetime stream of income. So if you ask a senior, would you rather have a half a million dollars in a bank or would you rather know that you're going to get $4,000 a month for the rest of your life adjusted for inflation? Most of the seniors will say, well, give me the $4,000 a month for the rest of my life guaranteed because if you leave me with $500,000 in the bank, for me, I will find a way to need money. And I can almost assure that in 10 years, I won't have it. If you guarantee me, though, $4,000 a month for the rest of my life, then I don't have to be concerned about it because 10 years from now, I'm still going to be getting $4,000 for the rest of my life. And so you think a lump sum of money is the big deal. It's not. Income becomes king when you're in retirement. And making sure it's guaranteed income is even more important. If it's tax-free income, that's a real bonus. So that's what you want to start to think to do and, and set it up so that you end up with an income stream in those years of your life as opposed to just a lump of money. And if you get a lump of money, put it in something that can increase your income stream because that's what's going to count. Your lifestyle is going to be based on your income stream, not the money sitting up in the bank. It's going to be based on what's coming in that I can count on, that's coming regular, that I can plan with, that I can know what I'm going to do with. That's going to be more important. And so you want to make sure you have that. And you want a guaranteed income stream. So all you ought to have investment property. And you're saying, well, I got rental property. I'm going to have rental income and stuff like that. You have seen at least twice in your lifetime, if you're old enough, where the real estate markets have crashed. You've seen this happen. And so that's not guaranteed income. It's good income, but you can't, you can't be, you've been there. You know how economic markets work. However, if you will get a guaranteed income, you might want to liquidate some of those property holdings while, while the markets are good. You might want to uh, sell, get money, and then put them in things that give you a guaranteed stream of income versus, well, if the economy goes well, people keep paying me $1,200 a month for rent, I'll be okay. Because you, those same houses in a bad economy will be paying you $400 a month for rent and there's nothing you can do about it. 
mm-hmm. except take it. And so that's why you want to plan this way. So I hope that helps. I know I'm going on, but I hope that helps. Oh, you no, know. it helped a lot. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, now, as, as we continue about this, I think you all are getting... Uh, beginning to get why we need to do this. So after the break, we're going to come back and we're going to get deeper. You can get on our line. You can call us at 504-341-8255. That's 504-341-8255. And join in the conversation. We'll be right back after the break. Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services, an independent and business consulting firm under the leadership of CEO Robert Tanner Jr. We specialize in advanced business planning, maximizing tax reduction, redirecting strategies, and much, much more. It's time to let the professionals at Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services lead you in the right direction. Visit us online at integrityfbc.com. Email us at info at integrityfbc.com or call to make an appointment at 985-224-1136. Well, welcome back. And uh, listen, let me just give you all some information because I want you to be able to reach us. The company is called Integrity Financial Business and Corporate Services. Uh, we have three locations around the city in Metairie, New Orleans, and in the River Region area. Um, you can reach us at our New Orleans office. That number is 504-799-2210. And if you're out in the River Region area, that Hammond, Laplace, that whole area, uh, Baton Rouge, that whole area, you can give us a call at our office at 985-224-1129. And we'll be glad to uh, get to work with you and make sure you have a successful wealth building plan. Also, let me say this. If you don't have a retirement plan right now, and I mean I want you to get past any shame you may have about that because that shame won't get it done. I want you to, to just say I need to call that office and get an appointment. And matter of fact, if you listen to this show right now, if you don't have a retirement plan, you need to call me because we can talk about how you can begin to implement one because you need one and you need one yesterday. So I want to talk to you about how do we get that done. Um, we have Sonia on line one. Sonia, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Good, afternoon. good morning. Good morning. I heard what you said just now, and I appreciate that information. You said a lot of great pointers. Um, the one thing that I was curious about, the guaranteed income stream that mm-hmm. you discussed, um, just now, mm-hmm. you would you would um, obtain that by starting an annuity. Is that correct? Right. All annuities are designed. The main purpose of an annuity is to provide a lifetime income. That's that's what they exist. So the idea being, you put a lump sum of money in, you keep adding money gradually, and the whole thing it's working on while you're adding money on the back side of it is figuring out. What would a lifetime of income be and what would that number be? And they're the only companies that will will give you, for example, a lifetime income that can grow. Um, and so you want to be thinking about that. While, while the money inside of it is still growing and they're distributing a lifetime income, it can be adjusted for inflation. Some have plans where they can ingest it, you know, 5% over after, at each five years or something like that. And so, but it's the only thing that will guarantee a couple of different things. Income for the rest of your life. If you're married, they can reduce yours a little bit and then be for your life and the rest of your spouse's life and so forth. And if and they have all different rules. And if they begin to distribute the income and there's still a large lump sum of money left, they will let you name a beneficiary. And then that could be your children and a lump sum can go to them or they will have the option of saying, give me an income payout like your mom did with you. 